this is going to be one of my unscripted, more free-flowing videos. I just wanted to put that out there before we get started. So um, I recently posted a video where I talked about what it looks like when I first come into work to the time that I leave working as a front-end developer for a creative agency. And so if you're interested in getting more insight on what that might look like, if you're interested in a front-end development role, be sure to check that video out. It'll be up here in the cards and in the description box below. So on that video, I got a comment that I want to share with you guys. And it said, I'm at the beginning of learning front-end stuff. It would be nice if you would show some kind of typical workflow to do's as a front-end web developer to have an idea which part of creating a homepage is your job and what is the work of the back-end developer. And I felt like this was a really good comment. And so we're going to answer that today in this video. Now, I do want to preface this video by saying that what I talk about and discuss in this video is going to be as it pertains to my experience and what I do in my particular company. This can change depending on if you work for big tech, if you work for a startup, if you work for another agency who just does things differently. So take this information and know that this can be different depending on your flow, your personal work experience and like where you work. Just wanted to put that out there. So for the purpose of this video, I want to use a resource called frontendpractice.com. And this is a resource that I'm not going to go in depth about in this video because I do have a video coming up next or the one after that where I'm going to share with you guys my favorite resources that I've come across so far that are really good resources to help anyone on their coding journey practice what they're actually learning. So you always hear people tell you like you need to practice what you're learning. But if you're someone who's not good at thinking about designs and like what a web page should look like, like me, then these are great resources I'm going to share with you guys that you will get you started. So for now, we're just going to go to pro uh, projects here. And as you can see, there's different levels, um, but we're going to start on level one and just do a simple example today. I'm going to choose this abstract website and then I'm going to go to view live. So this is an, this is a real website. Abstract is a real company with a real website and this is their real help center page. Um, so I'm going to use this because I am not a designer. I do not possess those magical powers that they possess. So I don't have any of the Photoshop or, you know, different softwares that they use the design tools that they use on my personal laptop. So. We're going to pretend as we go through this that this is something that the designer sent to me. This is a design, you know, template that they sent to me. So the first thing that would happen um, as it pertains to my experience in my particular, you know, role is that the designer will give me the design that they've created so that I can see exactly what this web page is supposed to look like. It's something that I will refer to over and over and over again until the project is complete because I need to make sure that what I develop is what they gave me is it looks like what they gave me typically on that file there will be a um, image of what it should look like on desktop and there will be a there will be a image of what it should look like when you go down to like mobile sizes so your cell phones and tablets so you should get two different images so that you as the developer can see like okay on a desktop these icons should be placed this way but when we scale down to a smaller screen size, they need to stack on top of each other or they need to look a certain way. So typically, the first thing I'm doing is just running through the design, figuring out what, you know, my mind is going on, like what technologies it might take to develop it, what needs to be done to get this to go from static to interactive using the different um, uh, tech stacks to develop it. So. For something like this, if we just scroll through here, it's pretty simple. There's no animations. There's no like, you know, things rotating and popping out at you. Even when the screen loads, it's pretty static. There's no type of like cool animations that load the screen page or anything like that. So I would say that this could easily be done with HTML and CSS. So for me, I would just go in and say, okay, HTML and CSS is what I need to use to get this done. So then I will move on to what are the assets that I need from the designer that I may not have already gotten from the file that they sent me. Now, most times when you are looking through the Photoshop document or Illustrator, whatever they sent you, you should be able to extract some of those images that you might need, any icons and logos you might need. You should be able to pull those out of the file and save them into a folder that you can, you know, dump into your repo. But Sometimes you don't like I've had times where like I'm not familiar with Photoshop. I don't use it. I don't use any design tools. So I'm still learning on the job how to use them and simple things like pulling out images that I need for my uh, files. And sometimes I have to ask the designer like, hey, can you resize something? Can you, 
send me something I'm unable to extract this or I'm not clicking something a certain way and they'll be able to help you. So if you ever run into that, just be sure to keep that communication line open with your designer. You're going to be collaborating with them. Um, there might be some things that they design that are not going to be able to be translated into code. And it is your job to tell them like, hey, this is a cool design. I love how you did this. But unfortunately, there's no way for me to develop this or the development process is just not going to it's not going to work. We need to maybe revisit the way that this works and come up with a better way to design it so that I can develop it and make it actually happen. So lots of communication, lots of um, feedback on both ends, because you're going to design you're going to develop their design and they're going to come back and say like, no, this is not where I placed this. Move it over, add some more padding, do this, this and that. So lots of communication and collaboration. Anyway, so what pictures do you need? What photos do you need? Uh, icons do you need? Are there any videos? Those are assets. Anything that you need to help you create this, um, to add to it, to bring it to life. Once I get my assets, so some assets on this page, for example, would be these icons. So these images that you see next to each one of these little text box here um, are going to be part of the assets that I need for the website. I might even need this abstract logo here at the top. These are things that I need to make sure that I have. So next, I'm going to set up my coding environment. So for me, I use VS Code um, on my personal projects, but at work, I use, like I said before in my last video, that I use WebStorm, whatever IDE integrated development environment that you use to create to actually write your code in, you'll need to go ahead and set that up. So I'm going to set up my HTML um, file. I'm going to set up my CSS file and I'm going to set up a folder that holds all of the assets. So all of the images, videos, anything like that, that I need to put into this to code and integrate into my project is going to have a, I'm going to have a folder within that main file. So maybe in another video, I can actually take you guys step by step through how I actually set that stuff up, but I'm not going to do that for sake of time for today's video. So yeah, the next step would be setting up your coding environment. So getting all of your files and directories together. So now we've gotten our design, we've gotten our assets, all of the images, videos, anything like that, that we need for the project. And we've set up our coding environment. Now it's time to actually develop. So some of the things that I will pick out from the design that they gave me as I develop would be like the font, the font family. So most times if you click on the file that the designer gave you, you'll be able to see what font they use and you want to use whatever font they use because nine times out of 10, that's what the client gave them. And that's what the font, you, you, that, that's their branding. So also um, in the same section on how can we help, there's this purple color that is added to the background here. I should be able to click on the design and it'll give me the hex code for that shade of purple that was used. And you want to make sure that you stay, you know, like don't do whatever you want and just say like, okay, they use this font, but I'm going to use this font or they use this hex code, but I'm going to use a different shade of purple. You want to stay with whatever the, the designer gave you, because like I said, nine times out of 10, that came from the client as part of their branding. So yeah, Things like that you'll be able to pull out. And then, like I said, I would just develop. So my job as a front-end developer is to literally create the code that allows you to see everything that you see here on the screen. I also make these buttons interactive. So if I click on learn more, it should take me to another page to learn more about that specific topic. Now, if this was me, I would have probably made that pop up in a different tab. I'm just really funny about that. I think you should have another tab pop up so that you know, if I want to go back, I can easily just go back to, to the previous tab, but that's just me nitpicking. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would just, uh, you know, something down here would probably take Flexbox. But see, there's a lot of different things that you can do to achieve. There's so many different ways that you can, you know, go about achieving the same thing. So you'll get comfortable as you learn more about the different elements, the different CSS properties and how everything works together. Um, you know, cascading down that sheet, you'll get used to what works best for you. Some people use grid, some people use Flexbox. Me personally, I tend to go towards Flexbox a little bit more, but you'll start to pick up on like what you see and then remember things that you've learned and say like, okay, that is going to work best to achieve this design. So as a front end developer, just walking through this page, I would be the one setting up this nav bar with the icon and the help center um, the submit a request button and the sign in button. I would be the one creating that. 
I'm going to create this next section with the how can we help in the search box. Now, depending on when you get to these type of fields, like a search box field, um, things or even like this sign in button, things that require like data um, to be pulled or submitted is probably going to be something that is a back end task. So I will create the button and the link and the functionality for the user on this website to be able to sign in. But where that information goes when they click sign in. So if we just click sign in, um, is it going to work? It's taking me to another page. So all of this, this email and password, once I type in my information, where that goes is typically more of a back end thing. I'm just creating this form here to say you need to be able to a user needs to be able to enter their email. A user needs to be able to enter their password and then they need to have a button to actually click sign in. But where that information goes from there or like if this was a sign up page for a subscription list and you were actually submitting your email off. Where that goes is back end stuff. And honestly, I don't know too much about like what happens from the time that you click that button. I just know that all of that gets handled by the back end developer typically because they're handling a lot of data structures and, you know, a lot of things that the user is never going to see. So um, if we scroll down here, these sections here, manage your content, all of this text, these icons, the colors, all of this stuff, the placement, the sizing. That's something that I would do as a front end developer. When you click learn more, it going to another page is something that I would do as a front end developer because that doesn't require any data. I just need to know the link that it needs to link to and put it inside my code. Um, scrolling down to this footer, I'm going to create this footer. All the links that are in this footer, all of these different um, like abstract resources, community company, all these different sections and subsections, I'm going to create that as a front end developer. And again, these are things that just probably link to other things. So this is something that a front end developer would do. Um, this logo and copyright text down here, something a back end developer would do. This help button is a chat box. Now this chat box is something that I've never actually worked with before, but I think that might be something that a back end developer would integrate. I could be wrong, but that, you know, sometimes things like that, when we're dealing with plugins and different things like that, typically, at least for my job, that's something the back end developer will handle. They're going to handle all of the plugins, all of the updates that the site needs so that what you worked on doesn't break. That's not going to be something that I do. I'm not going to get in here and update this, um, this site in a sense of like overall updates for the entire website. I just do the web page. So, so think of it like this. A front end developer is going to be working on anything that the user comes to the site. When they come to the site and they're able to see everything, you've created that as a front end developer. Anything that the user cannot see is going to be back end. So we've talked about getting the, getting the design from the designer. We've talked about deciding what technologies we need to use, what assets we need to use, setting up our environment, and then we start to code out our project. So let's just pretend that this page is all coded out. We're done. Um, we've made sure that this looks good on this side screen, so laptops and desktops. But also when we scroll in, you're going to notice like these sections here, these icons and everything should start to stack the smaller the screen gets. So you see how they stacked on top of each other? That's something that you would have to know how to do. It's called responsiveness. So how to, this is how it should look once we get down to smaller screens on phones. There's no room for them to be side by side anymore. They need to be on top of each other so that the user can scroll through and still see everything they need to see. That's going to be part of your job, too. So this website is coded out. We've made sure it's responsive. Everything is working. All of the links work. Things are you know, functioning as they should. Now I need to send this over to my project manager to review, to test. Um, my project manager tests the websites. He makes sure that all the links work. Everything is responsive. Everything is placed where it should be. So sometimes the project manager might not be too familiar with the design. So if there's any questions they have design-wise, they'll shoot that to the designer. And then the, the designer will then recap with me and give me feedback on things that I might need to tweak or change. Maybe something is not placed right. Maybe something needs to be a different color, you know, things like that. We'll collaborate on that. So it's not, you're never not going to be collaborating with other developers and project managers, designers until the project is done. Now it's crazy because most times for what I do, I don't ever really collaborate with the backend developer unless we're starting a, a new app. Like we're going to be developing a new app that requires him to set things up and give me access to he'll set he'll show me how to like set everything up 
and you know show me how to get access to things but other than that when i'm just coding static web pages like this it's me working by myself if i have questions i will ask the designer or project manager and then of course i have to keep that communication uh you know open i've definitely had to learn that while working on this job is to keep the people on your team updated on where you are in the project so they can have a better idea of turnaround time is this going to take a little bit longer than we expected so that they can update the client so be sure to you know keep that communication line open but for the most part you're going to just be working on this project by yourself and getting the help where you need it so i really hope that this answered your question as far as it pertains to what a front-end developer workflow might look like when it comes to building out a web page uh, such as this i need to learn a little bit more about back end and exactly what they do i just know that my back end developer deals a lot with setting things up you know, WordPress updates, um, you know, handling the data that goes into these projects. They don't do anything that has to do with the front end, what the user will actually see when they come and visit whatever project it is that you're working on. So yeah, like I said, I hope that this gives you a little bit more clarity on what it looks like to be a front end developer. Um, let me know if you guys have any other questions in the description box below. Again, Sorry if this video was all over the place because this was not scripted. I just decided to do this. I really wanted to answer that question for the um, subscriber that commented on my last video. Again, if you're interested in learning more about what I do as a front-end developer, be sure to check out that video that I talked about earlier. And next up, like I said, should be a resource video that goes in depth for those of you who want to get ideas of how to practice what you're learning on your coding journey. So yeah. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to stop talking and I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.